Good morning, dear ones. Happy Saturday. I have to constantly try to find new angles because I spend so much time at my desk and I don't want to just show you all the same footage over and over and over and over again. So I'm trying to constantly find fun new ways to show you my small apartment. Um, but hi, happy Saturday. So today, uh, Connor and I and Jordan and Jaren, uh, possibly Jaren, are all going to be going down to Pike Place Market. We're going to be hanging out for a bit. We're going to be walking around there. We're going to go visit Martin Sailor at their booth, which I'm so excited about. And I can finally get my hands on a honey bun. But until then, I have an hour roughly until I need to leave. So I'm using this time to pack orders. Your girl has so many orders. My So I ordered some freebies that I thought they were gonna get in yesterday, but they're not getting in until Monday. And I just need to pack more orders, so I've been cutting out my little sticker friends by hand, which has been a lot of work, but uh, because I can't find my silhouette machines. I have three silhouette machines and I cannot find them. They are hiding from me somewhere in this apartment, but I can't find them, so I have to cut these out by hand, which is okay. Uh, but I just want to be able to pack a few orders until the, so I'm just not left, um, not giving people anything. My tea's done steeping. Let's go get it. Shush. I am sure that y'all are sick to death of this shot by now. Sorry that I put it in basically every video, but what can you do? You drink as much tea as I do. put in a little too much milk. Uh, that's fine. All right. Oh, also, the coffee is not my cup of tea. Because it's not. The girl does not like coffee. That's okay. Onward. So maybe they don't come along on your journey exactly. with you. You just sort of let them sit yeah, and watch over your home. They just chill. <laughs> Actually, so this is kind of a funny story. This is like two months ago. Uh, this lady emailed us and she's like, please help. I told my daughter, her daughter's like five. Yes. And she told her that this is not like a stuffed animal. She's like, you can't snuggle this. It'll be your friend, but you can't snuggle it. Apparently the girl had been sneaking it into her bed at night. Oh, no. So we're like, all right, we'll do this one time. Um, she sent it in, and we took the beads off that were like broken from snuggling. There are a bunch of eyelashes in it. Oh! <laughs> it's good luck, I guess. Um, and we did little embroidery stitches so she could have the That's so cute. It was really cute. That's so sweet. But I, I do want a honey bun for myself. Honey bun. So. The adoption process is very important. I might have another one too. Oh my god, there's so many! We are ready to bunnies. There's so many! Bunnies are prey animals, that's why they sit up on their tail. They're pretty alert all the time. Of course, understandably so. I think. Yeah, this one called out to me. That's a big bun. That one's got a little extra squishy. I think I liked it because his ears were apart. So, 
as as crafting nerds and design nerds, you guys. Yes. We use the same machine to cut this out that uh -huh. we use to cut the shaving mix out. And oh the my stickers. gosh! So you, so it's like basically a mega like silhouette yeah. machine, yes, right? Yes, it's exactly like that. Okay. That's what we used to cut all of our vinyl to. Here you go. Okay. Something cat and nerd. The pastry pet trap is for you. No, there's a car. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, adorable. That's so cute. Of so course, cute. you guys can imagine how much work this is to math. Of course. We make a custom label just to put it over the top. Oh, I have friend every outing is an adventure. I have that patch hung up above my desk. Did Connor give it to you? Um, yeah. Our friend Jonathan. in my car. Um, I have so much like hodgepodge footage. I have no idea how it's all going to cut together, um, but I guess we'll figure that out. Um, I have been, oh man, uh, sorry, my hand is shaking as I'm holding my phone recording this. Uh, I've been so anxious the past couple days. Um, it's not unfounded. I am fairly stressed because I have the holidays coming up and um, I am hopefully going to be releasing some new types of products that I've never done before um, and I'm really nervous about them, one, coming in on time and two, turning out okay um, and I'm just doing, I'm planning on doing an enamel pin and some washi tape and I'm keeping it simple for my first go around and then I can venture into more designs but I'm just doing one of each um, to keep it a little easy on me but and then there's another um, stationary thing that's going to be coming to my shop that I don't want to reveal because I'm really excited about it um, and I want to leave y'all guessing on some stuff but anyway so I'm uh, stressed and anxious about everything going okay and I'm a little overwhelmed with all the things on my plate uh, and I have been avoiding recording this little segment uh, I've gone I just decided to do it on my phone instead of sitting down in front of the camera. Um, I have no idea what you're looking at right now as far as footage goes, but I hope it's nice. Um, but I figured that I would just finally sit down and record this. Uh, yeah, so I've been super anxious um, and really stressed, but uh, I am not, I'm being very aware and cognitive of how I'm moving through this feeling because I know this feeling very well and normally my response to this feeling is uh, catastrophizing and sort of succumbing to it and succumbing to the uh, very strong pull of I am feeling too many things so I'm just gonna react to that by not doing anything at all I talk to my therapist a lot about, uh, I, I've been describing my anxiety like this for years, but I, I see my anxiety um, as like an annoying roommate in my brain, if that makes sense. So it's sort of like, 
like the way that it's the way I imagine is that sometimes like my anxiety will just sort of like lock me away in a room and it sort of dulls out everything where I can like I guess uh, that might be more of my depression but it's the feeling of where like it's since I just get really really overwhelmed and so then I just shut down and it feels like I'm stuck in a dark room and I can hear everything happening on the other side of the door but I have no desire to go out there um that's sort of more I guess that happens more kind of at the end of my anxious spirals is that they usually just end up in a total emotional shutdown um that sometimes lasts for a few hours and sometimes lasts for a few days or a few weeks um and but I think now in the early stages it's basically like I'm trying to live my life and there's essentially this super annoying roommate my anxiety is basically just banging on the door of my brain just saying like hey 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 you have so much to do you have a lot to do you have a lot to do you have a lot to do right now and you know what I know that it's a lot to deal with so we just shouldn't do anything you should just come in here and just not do anything we just shouldn't do anything we just shouldn't do anything because you have too much on your mind um which is not how to not how to combat things and it's also not a feasible option for me as a business owner and as a person who has um a lot of financial responsibility towards my customers and people that like have paid me money and are expecting things from me um i of course have like i can take i can take you know an afternoon off or something or i can take time to myself i'm i'm working really hard on finding that work play balance but totally kind of shirking all responsibility just because I don't want to deal with things because I am very scared of them or because they make my heart race and they make my chest tight it unfortunately is not a possibility and so the past few days I've been trying to figure out how I can like coexist with this feeling and still be a productive business person and it's really hard. I would say that the number one thing that helped was writing everything down on my calendar so that I could see it all in front of me and I could see that like yes, I have a lot to do in the next 2 weeks, but it's not it's not impossible by any means. And I actually did quite a few things yesterday which felt really good. I ordered some like little insert cards and started designing some stuff that I'd been meaning to and got out a commission sketch that I had been putting off for a really long time um and it is it tr- like this is something that Connor tells me all the time it's something that he wrote about in sustainable loops too but it's just about like the smallest possible step writing everything down and then tackling things by the smallest possible step um and it helped a lot it really did because I was like oh I don't have I have quite a few things to do, but my time frame isn't nearly as crunched as I thought it was, and it's definitely not as it's definitely not impossible at all. It's very doable. It's very doable. Every time uh like last year, whenever I would sit down with Connor, he would help me plan out my week. I would tell him all the things I needed to do, and he was like, "This is very doable." And I was like, "Really? Because it feels like it's so much and it feels impossible." And he goes, "No, no, no. This is all super doable. It's just that my brain because oh, therapy is very good y'all we should all be going to therapy because my brain likes to has an old habit and an old pattern of self sabotaging where this is sort of like the crux moment where uh i can either choose to push through and keep doing the damn thing or i can succumb to the overwhelm and knowingly waste time on YouTube videos and uh like pointless errands that don't mean anything. Neither of those are good options. Um Yeah. So it's hard. Uh I'm sorry. I just got distracted because I just remembered that I'm getting my um 
I am getting my I'm getting new headshots done tomorrow, and I was like, oh, I need to go to the thrift store. I need to go to Goodwill and get um shirts for my headshots. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna go to Target, and then I'm like, I don't really want to go to Target. I'm trying so hard not to support fast fashion in any kind of way, y'all. Um, so gonna hit up a Goodwill on my way home from this audition and do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm just. Oh, I'm just, I'm trying to know that, like, yes, I am stressed, and yes, I'm a little overwhelmed, but it is the holiday season as a small business owner that is perfectly normal, and it's totally okay, and being stressed doesn't have to mean that I become a total wreck, um, and I think this is what they call stress management, which is a brand new skill for me. Uh, so, I am, and, and Connor even says, he's like, you seem to be handling your shit so well. And I was like, really? And he's like, it is a marked difference from how you were this time last year, which is huge, frankly, because, you know, we live together now, and, I mean, we were hanging out all the time this time last year, and he, like, knows who can, like... I don't know, see me, and, like, he knows me, and so he can see that I've grown, which is really cool, um, and again, a huge testament to a combination of therapy and meds that work, so I've just been, I'm stressed, but I'm okay, which is nice. Uh, and I've been definitely been avoiding work today a bit. Um, I'm also working on self-compassion, so when I do kind of get a little lost on the path, my uh, therapist, she's like, you're not falling off the bandwagon, you're not falling off, like, the road. She's like, you just maybe find a little rabbit trail off the side, and you get turned around for a bit, but you will find your way back. And so I got a little turned around today, but um, even recording this has helped me find my way back to the main trail, uh, focus on what needs to be focused on, and um, I'm probably going to journal a bit tonight, or at least just, like, maybe draw journal, art journal, I don't know, just write down things to try and sort it all out. Um, Moral of the story is that you are capable of really cool, good things even when you don't feel great. Um, Doing good and feeling good are not mutually, like, they don't always have to exist in tandem, if that makes sense. Um, That is not to say that you should feel good about doing bad things. That's a bad analogy. Don't listen to me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Sorry. That's a really bad analogy. Um, Yeah, so... Yep. Yep. That's all I have to say. Um, Thanks for watching this hodgepodge of a video. Again, I have no idea what you've been looking at. I hope it's been somewhat interesting. Um, And I love you so much. Um, A big old thank you to my patrons uh, for just being so rad and so nice and just dope as all hell. And Um, Thank you to you for being here and sharing your world with me and spending your time with me. Uh, Time is our most precious resource, and I'm honored that I get any of yours. It means a lot. You're the best. Um, Sophie, Connor, and I all send our love, and um, yeah, you're awesome. I love you so much, and I will see you soon. Stay brilliant. Bye.